What's up blockheads? Doing a episode for the Harley Davidson Iron 883 build giveaway series. I think it's like episode five or six. Yeah, basically giving this bike away through Patreon. If you guys want to get in on it, check out the description down below. It'll basically explain how to get involved if you uh, possibly want to win. Uh, this iron that i'm building out so today we got a couple things to do that we're going to be focusing on and we got a special helper joey we also have a couple really cool parts from harley davidson so uh, if you guys didn't know harley davidson is one of the sponsors of the build so big shout out to harley davidson we've got uh oil level auto temp dipstick we've got a flush mount cap we've got new um digital speedometer so that'll replace that one and then we also have these, which are pretty awesome. Fully adjustable piggyback shocks. So those should look good. We're gonna unpackage all that. Oh, also got a William Max. This isn't from Harley, but William Max swing arm bag. And we got some better clips for the battery cover. And we're gonna be relocating the ECU to the left side. So we need stronger, stronger gripper pieces there. Real technical term, gripper pieces. Oh, yeah. yeah, just gonna be jumping in, uh, getting as much done as we can. Definitely got a work cut out for us. Yeah, I don't even know where to get started. Let's try with the headlight. Oh yeah. Yeah, this damn headlight. All right, roll the intro. Let's get into it. All right, so this headlight has been a total pain in the ass, um, as I was telling Joey earlier. Uh, so you've got the, the stock, basically bucket, and it has a little metal piece that indexes the stock headlight. Um, unfortunately, this headlight that we're trying to put in here does not have a little notch on the back, so whenever you basically put it in, it moves around a lot. So I've used uh, some black silicone to basically hold it in place, and then we're gonna have this ring that comes up, connects into the uh, grill piece there. It's definitely gonna be a two-person job, so yeah. set this down for a second, let's see if we can get it. Uh. All right, guys, so we worked on this thing for a good, what, 15, 20 minutes, oh, yeah. trying to get it basically together two people putting on one headlight and this will just it just won't go so it threads onto this just fine which is the base right the ring but the thing about this headlight is it has this little piece that like kind of raises up around it and the inside of the grill piece hits that part so we basically either have to trim it off you know and risk messing it up all for like the grill piece or we just use the stock stock trim ring so it's either you get the grill or you get the cool headlight Obviously the cool headlight, you know, being more functional, I would go with this. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, still looks really good, obviously, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna throw that back on the bike. Yep, should bolt right out. All right, so we're gonna adjust this thing up later, but for now, yeah. Looking like a little brute force. That's right. Let's see what she looks like. High beam. That's crazy. Look at that little. Oh, it shows up so good on camera. Whoa. Dude, that's cool. That's crazy. You can like see all in there. Well, there you go. So, brand of this is provided by Rogue Rider Industries, which is uh, who provides the signals. So, big shout out to Rogue Rider. These are great because there's no halo and they go amber on, amber on instead of amber off. And then this is, uh, I can't remember the name of it. I'll post it right here on the screen. Uh, but it's also by Rogue Rider. Same as the uh, lights here. Tail lights also, but not the tail light covers. Those are uh, by Get Phantom. Man. All right, so that's done. On to the next thing. Um, what you wanna do, man? What you wanna do next? Flush mount fuel cap? There you go. That's a hard one. Let's yeah. get through these boxes one by one. Thank you, Harley Davidson. Mm -hmm. Double sided on that. You never think you're gonna stab yourself when you put it back in that sheath? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a box inside of a box. Quality Harley packaging. <laughs> it's like stab through your pants. It's like the old school knights when they had to like use their hand to see where the sheath is. Well, yeah, to, pull it out, feel yeah, it, and then. Yeah, put my finger there so I see where the sheath is, and then so I put it in my back pocket now, because I did that on my front pocket. Oh, nice. I didn't care. We got to do the instructions. There we go. Ooh, she party. Oh, much better than that thing. All right, so how do we <laughs> install that? Uh, you know, I'm gonna just take a gander here. See, uh, 
for this other one installs. So you just like cut in, right? Yeah. But what if we did... Yep, and then we have to install the trim ring. So it should there click and then down over. Locks in place. Already looks much better. But then with the trim ring, that'll basically uh, add like a little bevel around it. Now the trim ring, I'm pretty sure is not even all the way around. So that has to be like indexed correctly. Yeah, yeah it looks like that's the, the top, right? I would assume so. It probably says it in the directions actually. Yeah. Now once it's adhesive on there, it's good to me. Do. Yeah. Should we hit it with some uh, yeah. stuff beforehand just to promote the adhesion? Always. So yeah, this thing basically indexed for you. You know what? I am actually going to read the directions to make sure because I'm pretty sure that should be the top. All right. So just threw a little piece of uh, duct tape on the top to see where it indexed. <laughs> Force. Power. There we go. Hurry, hurry. Man, that looks good. Cleans it up a lot. Good job, Harley. All right, next thing. Oil level and temperature dipstick, XL Black. Also another easy install. Hitting the hard stuff today, guys. <laughs> but I mean, this is that cool little stuff, you know, that like, it's like the little details that most people like would just glance over that kind of make it that uh, much better. You don't like, realize it's better. there until you change it. Yeah. You know, no one thinks about the dipstick. But dude, these dipsticks are awesome. I had one on my Dyna. Mm -hmm. And like being able to like, you know, touch the little gauge thing and see what the, the oil level is the and the temperature. You know, it's it's convenient. Granted, it's an 883. It's not going to like overheat too much. Also, side note, you guys be careful around the um, the sweepers because Joey just got himself. Which are These things are sharp yeah. as hell, man. Yeah. Step one, remove old oil dipstick. There you go. Should have. Damn. <laughs> it's a little cold in here. So it shows the level, temperature. It's a nice 79 degrees. I'm just gonna take this one out. There, there you go. go. I guess it doesn't pop up. Yeah, it doesn't pop up. Yeah. That's cool, man. Man, that's actually, that sets in there nice. Yeah. Well, I feel like that was like underwhelming, but Guys, that's really useful. So once again, big thanks to Harley Davidson for providing that part. And I'm gonna take this little silver trim ring off and I'm gonna get that black too, so that it'll be, you know, straight black, blacked out. All right, so next up, gonna be replacing the stock gauge, which looks like this. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Will it know to put 126 miles on the new gauge? Yes, the yeah. ECU or ECM in this case should have that stored in there. Nice, okay. So it'll basically marry to, to that one. So yeah, we're gonna remove this one and we're gonna put this one on there, which is much cooler. Little did Joey know it was gonna be put to work. <laughs> hey, you wanna come help me with the bike? Yeah, yeah, sure. Open these boxes. Cut yourself a little off. See, funny thing is, Joey's been a fan for a while. Little did he know how underwhelming the build videos are. Yeah. <laughs> you see it post and it's just like, ah, oh, cool. The process, there's no music playing right now like there is in the videos. All right, boom, combination speed and tech, four inch. Is that right? Four inch? Yes. Yeah. I thought it was a three and a half. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks about right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of sorry, told me, cut away from yourself. Sorry, mom. Nice. I just thought it looked like a smiley face. Yeah, it does. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So let's get it all plugged up and uh, turn it on and see what it looks like. How exciting. <laughs> Should probably read the directions on this one though. More than likely. All right, let's check it out. We learned something. We tried to basically plug it up. I was kind of wondering why this connection was in there. So it's uh, the data link connector and then the gauge connector, right? Which goes into there. So you basically have to plug it into here first in order to copy stuff over. So we're gonna unplug the FP3, plug this in first. Yep. Yep, all right. And then it says to, uh, blah, blah, blah. And so make sure this is in the run. So that's in the run. And ignition to the accessory. You just want to turn that to accessory. I'm not seeing anything. Data link connector. We're good there. It ain't doing nothing. All right, so some trial and error here. So we basically got that one plugged in. Run switch on. And then we also have this one plugged in. I think that's how it copies over. So it sends the data from that to here. 
Let's go ahead and hit the accessory. And then it said to the ignition, it should wrap the display there. Oh, there we go. Bam. Check. Okay. Okay. Check and finally okay. One okay displays the copying process is successful. Turn the ignition switch to the off position. Disconnect the adapter harness from the link. So basically remove the old one and plug in the new one. Hey, appreciate the help, bro. Yeah, no problem. All this right. is certainly uh, not as underwhelming as the gas and Yeah. There you go. Yeah, all right, it works. Sweet. Looks good. This is any cool. What? So, turn that ignition switch. To what? To ignition. Oh, all the way. Whoa! Wow test. Mm, diagnostic. So you're able to basically change the colors and stuff too? I don't know about that, but that's how we diagnose DTCs. Yes. Diagnostic trouble codes. So you basically hold the button as you start it up? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it'll tell you the part number of whatever component you're checking codes for. Harley hacks. <laughs> that's cool, man. So if you press the if you press the back thing, what is it? It just cycles through the, um, the normal, right? So that's the trip button normally. Okay. So it just cycles through stuff as per normal. Oh, you're shutting the tank. Sorry, it's a habit. <laughs> See, it's not like a normal clock where you can just hold it till it gets to 48. You gotta press it 48 times. 48 By the time you get to 48, it's 49. Okay. And then I'm not sure this is worth it. All right. <laughs> Getting a finger workout today. It's the little things. Your time. Your clock will be right when you receive this bike. Uh, unless you're not in our time zone. <laughs> and it will be wrong, yes. Yeah. All right, just to run through this real quick too, guys, if uh, whoever wins it, if they want to change the, uh, the color here. So it says press and hold the trip reset button and then turn the ignition switch to the accessory position. Then release the trip reset button. The gauge will display setup and show the fuel level display. So basically, Joe's holding it. Bam, accessory, let it go. And then it says press the trip reset button to toggle through the different displays until the display color function is selected. So you get brightness. Bam. What? That's cool. That's pretty badass. I'm gonna say go red because black and red. What do you think? Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how to actually change it. Because every time I press it, it just goes to the next one. Maybe you have to like hold it. That's what I'm trying to do. It says turn the ignition switch quickly to off. Or do you have to like catch it? <laughs> that's what I thought, but I don't think that's it. All right, so turn the ignition switch quickly to off and then back to accessory. The gauge will display the color number of the current color. So we have to catch it like when it's, all right, so we gotta catch it when it's red. All right, so it's after. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> was it for red or orange? <laughs> I didn't want orange, I think I did it. Oh, oh, you have to do off and then on, like at the... Oh no, are you able to like do that and it get to red? Can you hold it down? Oh, sure. Um, red is zero through 15. <laughs> Bro, it goes up to 600. <laughs> nope, nope, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> well, the red happens again at 490. <laughs> Maybe we can... <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start over. I'm at 80. Here, let's, let's start. We'll start over. <laughs> you gotta press this shit like 520, 518 times. All right. So now you gotta cycle to the. All right. So I gotta basically turn it off and catch it coming back on. So it's like orange, white, red. Okay. So I'll turn it off during white. Bring it back on during red. What the. F Gauge will display the number of the current color. Press and hold the trip reset button to quickly cycle through the colors. Release the trip reset button to stop cycling through the colors. Ah, uh, you can hold it, nice. Oh, right, it so. is changing colors as it increases. See, now it's green, started orange, and now it's blue. So yeah, it says red is 491 through 525, just or telling. zero through 15. Yeah. Just tell me when you get to a red you like. Let's just stop at like 490-ish. Yeah, stop, oh, oh that's it. But luckily we got zero through 15. Bam, that works for me. It's very red. Very. Matches. Yes. Bam, that's nice. Cool, all right, so let's figure out how to leave it there. Turn the ignition switch quickly to off and then back to accessory to save the color. The gauge will display saved and then return to the display color select menu. So we gotta go, huh? Oh. Oh. 
Save. Bam. We did it. Turn the ignition switch off. We're going for a normal operation. You want everything to be red? You want the needle to be like white? Or is red every good? Oh, what do you think? White? White needle maybe? Yeah. Let me kill it. Yeah, white. white's good. Yeah, so it should be the same process. White is 526 through 600. I think the contrast of the red on the white would look pretty good. Especially at night when you need the color. Yeah. You right there? Yeah, looks good to me. Bam, saved. Brightness is all the way up. Yep. Change the color of all that. The dial will be red. Yep. LCD will be red. Tachometer will be white. Yep. That's it. Sweet. Good job, bro. Bam. All right, so now that we've got the gauge on there, good to go. Gonna keep the plastic on there for now. Uh, need to tidy up the wiring a little bit so that the uh, tank lift sets well. So many of you guys in the last video, I had the tank basically up on a block because I was working on the wiring and y'all were like, oh my God, blockhead, tank back of Notre Dame. <laughs> Punch back of Notre Dame style. Yeah, so it's just cause I had the block there. But um, like I said, whenever we have the tank lift on here and it is all lined up correctly, it needs to go down about a half an inch right now. So I'm just gonna tidy up the wiring here. But as you can see, it's pretty much gonna line up perfectly with that. And then with the flush mount cap, just gonna tidy up some wiring and uh, we'll run this bolt through, which will hold the gauge up by this piece from here. And that'll be, uh, that'll be that done. So let's, let's do that. Few inches later. All right, so we got tank bolt in the back, tank bolt in front, gauge loosely mounted on here. I'm not gonna tighten everything down right now until we have basically have it off the lift so that I can angle this correctly so that whenever we, uh, you know, are sitting on the bike, you know, you can line it all up, leave that loose for now. We're good here. Uh, I'm thinking fender now, what do you think? So we're gonna work on basically relocating the uh, ECU. What? ECU, ECM? ECM. ECM, okay. It's a module. All right, so yeah, basically taking it off of the fender, uh, we're gonna try and route this through here. We gotta take the battery out, do all that stuff to uh, get this main wiring harness through there under the frame and to over here. Yeah, we got the wiring all for the back stuff, which we'll probably disconnect here in just a second. Or now. Remove these, remove the battery, take that out. Eventually. Played around with this a bit. We do have it routed under the frame. Yeah, that pulls like, it's right out. Yep. yep. Great, huh? <laughs> the look of distaste. <laughs> so yeah, we've got this basically routed over here. We did manage to kind of get the cover on, the battery cover back on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shave these down so that it fits a little more flush. Once we get it all on, basically zip tie it. However, not gonna do that right now because I am gonna be replacing the battery, as you guys can see there, has a date of 517. So I'm gonna get a new, what'd you call it, a life battery? Yeah, lithium iron life battery, the new Harley Davidson uh, lithium iron batteries. They are like, when this Forster ones are two pounds, couple ounces like they are super light that's awesome so yeah we're gonna outfit it with a uh, crazy stupid light life battery and uh, you said it was a double the life cycle yeah I think they're claiming double the life cycle a lot more cold cranking amps and it's a lot significantly lighter it's also got an indicator on the top of the battery to indicate the state of charge so you'll be able to remove your cover and tap the button and yeah. see what your charges hell yeah so gonna hook you guys up with that for this build um, however yeah, we're not gonna finish this up just because whenever I do get that new battery in, uh, we're gonna zip tie basically the uh, the ECU to the bracket once we've shaved those pieces off. And then we're gonna fit in the, uh, obviously the main fuse and the FP3. However, once I do all that, I don't wanna have to undo it. So just gonna wait till we get the that other battery in. So in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and focus on the rear fender, uh, get it taken off. The idea here is, since there's a big old hole right here is uh, to chop it right here. And then we're gonna basically take it and move it forward into the wheel well. Now, as per a good friend, Charles at Orlando Harley, he says that whenever you do that hole from here should line up pretty well here. That way we don't have to create like a new edge for the, uh, like that chopped fender look. Basically the edge will have already been created for us. That's the, uh, that's the thought process anyways, but we'll see if it works or not. So. We gotta take off the, uh, the what are these called? Fender strut covers? Yes. Yes, fender strut covers. Um, we gotta take off the coilovers. 
which we've got new ones for you guys. Got to take off the uh, lighting in the back. Last time I did this, I remember it being a total pain in the ass. So, you ready for all that? <laughs> yeah. All right. 20 minutes later. Ta da! All right, suspension off on both sides. I am. All right, so now what we're gonna do, yeah, we basically got the bolt out, or bolts out here, Torx bolts. Uh, suspension off, got the bolt out of here. Now Joey's gonna lift this up, which will raise this fender. <laughs> a little short. <laughs> awesome, and that'll give us access to the uh, that nut in there uh, for both sides for the signals. That way, that will be the last thing that we take off, and then the fender should come free. Hopefully. Yeah, it's probably about good. They're pain in the ass. The really long bolts, dude. They're, see, they thread into right here. Mm -hmm. So the bolt is like that long. All right, got everything off of this strut bracket, as well as here. Fender is off. There you go. It's just for one. Right, so you holding? You should send him a picture of that. Just a mess of them. <laughs> I don't think this will fit on the street card. No, probably not. <laughs> Bam, there it is. All right, so we got a little bit of figuring out to do with that thing. Use this as a mask for the following. <laughs> two eyes up here. Another strata face. <laughs> yeah. Inner parts that hold the wiring. So you guys can, yep, see the uh, assembly of a rear fender on a sports chair. End up getting this line out because we're going to chop that piece up. I'll probably just get a different uh, plate bracket that mounts into the axle. Comes back. So that's a, that's a big step right there. I'm gonna sit back and figure out what to do next. Several bad puns later. All right guys, so we are at a stopping point uh, because there's a couple things that we need to do in order to proceed that we are currently not able to do. The next couple steps, I uh, basically need to uh, get a new battery so that we can connect all this up, tidy it up, make sure it all fits. Uh, we'll be using the new uh, battery cover connectors there. Uh, I need to take the rivets out of the fender here so that we can line it up uh, in the between the fender support brackets. Or basically, you're gonna be cutting it from where my hand is left, so we're gonna cut all this stuff off. We're gonna try to repurpose the plastic um, inner fender piece to protect some of the electronics, the wiring and all that there. So, which means we'll have to buy a rivet gun and uh, put some new rivets, take this license plate bracket off and the lighting and the wiring and all that stuff there. And then also have to get these de-pinned. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna use these. Joy and I talked about using some alloy art, art ones like we did for uh, Miss Blockhead's bike. I actually originally bought those for the Dyna, but used them on hers. Uh, but gonna deep in this anyways, just because we need to uh, get it through this part of the bracket or this part of the cover. And then once we have the um, this rear fender piece, uh, the rivets all taken out and the like substructure taken out as well, we can line it up where we want and then uh, figure out where to cut. Uh, pretty sure it's gonna be like right, like right here. And then I'll order those uh, al alloy art indicator signal things just to see if we can fit them over that. If we can't, then we'll put them on another bike, I guess. And if those don't fit, then we'll just continue to use the ones we got. But uh, as the current status of it, Joey, thank you again for the help. Appreciate it. You got like an Instagram or something that people should follow you at? Oh, the, the little bagger on Instagram. Yeah. It's kind of up and running, but uh, we'll, we'll get it up there. The little bagger? Yep, the little bagger. Just all one word? Yep. Cool, I'll drop it right here on the screen and down in the description below. Joey's actually talking about doing motovlogging yeah. and we've actually talked about possibly doing your first one yeah. like with me yeah. so that you can kind of ask me questions as we're doing it to get like an insight into maybe some motovlogging. But yeah, might be a cool episode. So yeah, you guys go, be sure to follow Joey and um, hit that follow button on his IG. This is where we're at with the, uh, with the build. So for all you people that were worrying last time around, about how high the tank looked, that's that's where it's gonna be. And actually these bars are gonna be angled down even more. You know, the mirrors will line up a little better, but uh, everything's just kind of very loosely done right now because we need to get it off of the lift in order to line it all up. But we're working our way front to back. We got that, that light on there, man, that looks good. We got the new gauge on there. We got the coilovers or the suspension taken out. We got a lot done. Yeah. Anyways, like I said, if you guys are interested in getting in on this, you gotta be a patron, you gotta be a member, you gotta be a Blockhead patron. So go sign up, patreon.com slash blockheadmoto to put your hat in the ring if you guys wanna possibly win this bike 
when I am done building it out. Uh, it's just a, basically a way of me giving back to the community that has given me so much, so thank you guys. It's been fun so far, but we're definitely winding down. I should be done, and we should be giving this thing away at the end of May. So that's, I mean, it's like end of April right now. So this thing should be wrapped up within the next month, uh, a little over a month, pretty crazy thing. If you guys need any, uh, or have any questions on how the whole Patreon thing works, go check out the page, patreon.com slash blockheadmoto. Uh, check out the rules and all that stuff. And if you have questions beyond that, send me a message or post up down in the comments below. I think that's it for this episode. Once again, man, thank you. I appreciate all the help. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Be part of that bell yeah squad. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Deuces.